Okay, so let's see how much you understand about triangles and squares. Let me go ahead and explain the question here. We want to find the area of this small square, this one right here, and it's inside of this larger square. And the only information that we have is at the midpoint of the diagonal. In other words, from here to here is the diagonal of the larger square, but the midpoint, or this length right here, halfway through, the diagonal is six units long. Okay, so again, we wanna find the area of that small square, and this is all the information that we have. Again, the midpoint of the diagonal is six units long. Well, if we can figure this out, if you can calculate the area of this small square, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section and feel free to use a calculator as well. But uh, I'm gonna show you the correct answer in just one second, and then of course, I'm gonna show you how to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like, and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct answer is 18 units squared. Now remember this length right here is just six units if it was like six millimeters. Uh, remember we're trying to find area, so area is always, uh, always units squared. So if that was uh, uh, six millimeters, our answer would be 18 millimeters squared but we don't have actual units, so we'll just say units squared. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you figure this out, we definitely have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face in A+, plus, a 100%, and multiple stars. You can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of squares and triangles and all the different aspects of uh, uh, triangles and squares. A lot of people think, um, that there's not too much to know about a square or a triangle. But in actuality, there's quite a bit of properties that you need to understand about both of these uh, shapes. And of course, uh, if you don't understand these properties, you will not be able to figure this problem out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the actual solution. And first, we need a strategy, right? So how can we determine the area of this small square right here? Well, it's probably a good idea to understand what the formula for the area of a square is. So the area of a square is side squared. Okay, in other words, if I know this side and this side, if I multiply uh, this side times this side, of course, the, the lengths are the same in a square, uh, that is going to be the area. So that is the area of, the squ of, uh, uh, of a square. That's the formula. Of course, we're going to have to calculate uh, this um, area in just one second, but how do we get this length? We're looking for this length and this length. How can we possibly get this length if we only have this uh, piece of information right here that the midpoint through the diagonal? Again, this uh, line from here to here is called the diagonal of a square. And we're told that the midpoint or halfway through is six units. Well, we need to kind of take a, a closer look at what's going on here. And in a square, the angles in a square are 90 degrees. So all of these right here are right angles. So uh, now the diagonal splits this 90 degrees, right? So a diagonal is uh, chopping through that 90 degrees. So one half of 90 degrees is going to be equal to 45 degrees. So what we have here is a 45 degree angle, and this is also a 45 degree angle, and this is a right angle right here. So let's just kind of pay attention to this little triangle above this small square. And if we can determine the uh, lengths of the sides of this triangle right here, okay, well, then we will have actually determined uh, the side of this uh, uh, small square. Okay, so let's go ahead and focus in our efforts on figuring out the sides of this small uh, triangle because we do have the hypotenuse of this uh, small right triangle. Okay, so could we, again, if we can get this side, then we could determine the area of, a, uh, of this square in this problem. 
So anytime you're dealing with a math problem, whether it's an algebra problem or a geometry problem, you have to look at the problem, study the problem, and there's different ways to approach uh, the problem. Okay, there's uh, this particular problem can be done or solved in various ways. So you need a strategy. Okay, so pick a strategy that works. Of course, if you don't understand the properties of uh, the diagonal um, in a square or how to find the area of a square, you know, you're not going to be able to figure this thing out. Okay, so let's go ahead and just kind of think about this problem in terms of uh, uh, this way. So we have this small triangle. Okay, so this one right here uh, is this triangle. Okay, so I'm just going to break this out so we can kind of concentrate on this. So these angles right here are the same. So this is a 45 degree angle, 45 degree angle. So we got 45, 45, 90. Now that's important to understand because this is what we call a special right triangle. Okay, so there's some things that we know about a 45, 45 degree or 45, 45, 90 degree. But one thing that we definitely know about this triangle is that it is a right triangle. So what should come to mind? Well, the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Anytime you see a right triangle, this is probably one of the first things that should pop into your head. Now, if you're not familiar with the Pythagorean theorem, I'm going to show you how it works in just one second because this is going to be a big part of how we solve this problem. Okay, so again, what we want to do here is see if we can find this length x. Okay, of course, it's going to be the same side because when you have a 45, 45, 90 degree uh, right triangle, the sides are congruent. Okay, so if we can find what x is equal to, then we can kind of go back over here to our triangle, right? I mean, our square, excuse me. So here, because the top of this small triangle, let's focus in here so no one is confused. Matter of fact, let me erase this. Okay, so right here, okay, if we can find this length, which of course is going to be the same length as this, this will be actually the side of the square. So this, uh, we're going to call this uh, x because you don't know what this is, but this x will be the same as the side of the square, and we want to find the area of that small square, so this is going to be x times x, or x squared. Okay, so really what we're trying to do here is figure out what x squared is equal to, because that will be the area of the small square. Okay, so hopefully you understand the strategy, so let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is have you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now I wouldn't stop this lovely math video, uh, if it wasn't that important. Now, of course, it's important to me uh, to have you subscribe to uh, my channel. Uh, and, you know, I'm not going to uh, say it's not, but really my objective is to reach as many people as I can that want to learn math, who need help in math, and are particularly frustrated with math. People that are like this, I don't like math, I don't understand math. Well, people don't like things they don't understand. And uh, math is one of these kind of classic subjects that, unfortunately, uh, a lot of people just don't get um, good instruction okay, when it comes to mathematics. I'm not trying to knock any math teacher uh, out there. But, uh, you know, if you don't understand your teacher, you're going to be frustrated. So what I'm trying to do is connect with these people because people give up on math, and that has uh, big implications for their future. So by you subscribing, it does help that YouTube algorithm, uh, you know, connect me with those people that could benefit from my work. But uh, if you're going to subscribe, go ahead and hit that notification bell as well because, uh, you know, it, it doesn't really make sense to subscribe and then not know what latest videos I am posting. Okay, so thanks so much for listening to me. Let's get back to this problem. Okay, so again, our objective here is to determine what x is equal to. So we have x, x, this is our little uh, small triangle here. We know the hypotenuse, which is the midpoint of that diagonal, is 6. So if we, if we could solve for x, then we can figure this problem out. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to what I stated in, in the beginning of this video when we're talking about right triangles. One of your uh, biggest things that you always want to kind of rely on when you, when you see a right triangle is the Pythagorean Theorem. Now, the Pythagorean Theorem is not going to solve every single problem that you're going to have with a right triangle, but it's absolutely necessary uh, that you think of it because you could definitely use it and probably... Uh, 
the majority of the time, the majority of the times when you have a right triangle problem, you're going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem. So let's just talk about this as real quick. You can see I have this work laid out, but uh, let's make sure we understand what's going on here. So we have a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. What does this mean? Well, a, okay, matter of fact, let me just erase this here real quick. So a and b are the shorter sides of a right triangle. Now, of course, in this particular uh, case, because we're dealing with the 45, 45 uh, degree, 45, 45, 90 degree right triangle, these are actually the same length. But oftentimes, you know, you'll have a right triangle, something like this, where they're not. But uh, that's not important. What side you call A, what side you call B. These are the lengths of this side. All you need to remember is that the longest side of a right triangle is the variable C. That's called the hypotenuse, okay? Okay, now, what does this uh, uh, state, the Pythagorean theorem? Well, what it's saying is if we square this side, then we add it to the square of this side, it's going to be equal to the uh, square of the longest side or the hypotenuse. And that's what this is saying. So uh, this works in every single right triangle. And of course, we can use it to solve this triangle. So this side is x, and this side is x, and this side right here is 6. This is the hypotenuse. So this is going to be c, and this, can, this one or this one could be a or b. doesn't make a difference. So let's go ahead and plug in our respective information to figure this problem out. Okay, so a squared, we'll call that x squared plus b squared, we'll call that another x squared, is equal to c squared, which of course will be 6 squared. All right, so x squared plus x squared is going to be 2x squared. 6 squared is 36. So let's go ahead and solve. And we're looking at this equation. This is actually a quadratic equation. And some of you might be focused in on here, like, oh, I got to solve for x because your algebra mind is taking over. You're like, all right, I'm going to solve for x, but we don't really even need to solve this equation fully. Okay. Now, on our uh, way to solve for x, what we have to do is divide both sides of the equation here by 2. And when we do that, we get x squared is equal to 18. Now, some of you are going to be inclined to want to take the square root of both sides and solve this equation for x. But is that important? Well, no, it's not important because, remember, uh, we're looking for the area of that small squared, and that is equal to x squared. Okay, we don't need x. We could find x, but all we're going to have to do is multiply by x again to get back to x squared. So if you are paying attention to you know the strategy, you'll be like, wait a minute here. I don't have to take that next step. Why do more math work uh, if you don't have to? And there is our lovely solution. x squared is equal to 18, which, of course, is the area of that small square. Okay, so, uh, you know, hopefully you found this problem interesting. And the whole idea behind a problem like this is to teach you something or to practice, you know, give you some practice and things you already know. Now, if you're interested in learning more geometry, uh, let me give you a couple suggestions. Uh, you can find a link to my full geometry course in the description below. I also have a ton of uh, videos like this on my YouTube channel. But uh, if you don't want to learn uh, like a full geometry course, and you know, my uh, full geometry course will take most students about one year long. Check out uh, my other courses. You'll find them in the description uh, of this video. But, uh, you know, I have a lot of other courses where I don't teach as much geometry, but I do focus in on some basic, you know, things that I think all math students uh, should know. Things about triangles, circles, uh, squares, polygons. But, uh, you know, wherever you're at in mathematics, here's the thing. If you don't practice math, you're not going to get better at it. So, anyways, with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.